great to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem. You know, as I'm getting older, it's really funny, when I was younger, I would read about anniversaries and it would all be in the history books. Now I read about anniversaries and I remember when they happened. So I remember 50 years ago. I remember how proud we all were, how happy we all were. And for 50 years, uh, Israel, uh, Jerusalem has remained the, uh, the undivided, etern eternal capital of Israel. And that's the way it should be and will be. Um, now, 50 years, Israel has taken control of Jerusalem. But for 50 years, Christians and Muslims have been able to visit their holy sites. Jews could not visit holy sites before 1967. So it's 50 years. When I go to Israel on official travel, I always set aside an hour or so to visit the Kotel, the Western Wall. And it doesn't take a national expert to know, by the way, that the Kotel is in Israel. Yeah. It is the holiest site in Judaism, and it always makes me feel closer to the Jewish people, to Israel and to God and to Hashem when I go there. I go there and I wrap tefillin, I pray at the wall, I take in the smells, the sights, the comfort of being in the spiritual center of Judaism. And I'm proud of how the Jewish state allows access to all holy sites, as Jerusalem means something to three religions. In this sense, Israel is a model for religious pluralism and has much to teach the rest of the region. So I, I thank the kind words. I always say that my record in Congress is second to none when it comes to reaffirming the Jewish connection to Jerusalem, and second to none when it involves making sure that support for Israel is bipartisan. And support for Israel is bipartisan, and that's the way it should be. I know that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel because when I visit the Prime Minister, the Supreme Court, the Knesset, the essential institutions of Israeli democracy, we meet in Jerusalem. And I fought for Israel to be listed as the place of birth on American passports of children born in Jerusalem. It's a disgrace that that's not happened. And I voted numerous times to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, and that should happen now with the visit of President Trump. Let's hope that happens. So U.S.-Israel relationship must remain strong and bipartisan. I'm proud to be here with Democrats and Republicans alike to show our support today. And I always say this, I've been saying this for years, presidents come and go, prime ministers come and go, members of Knesset come and go, and even members of Congress come and go, but I don't want to go so quickly. <laughs> but the bipartisan nature of the U.S.-Israel relationship is here to stay. I want to make sure that the relationship between the two countries is so strong that it doesn't matter who's president or prime minister or who serves in one office, we want the United States and Israel to continue to be the strongest of allies. So let me just again say thank you for gathering here today to ensure the Congress bears witness to this monumental anniversary. Your passion helps to inform our decision making, and I welcome the opportunity to be with you today. Thank you for your activism. I'm Yisrael Al-Khai.